Happy to see you here. I'm Yilda Sethi, and I'm going to be taking you through this master training, specifically looking at trauma, and even more specifically, looking at systemic trauma, generational trauma, and also what we can do about it. So why your clients are stuck and how to set them free. My promise to you is that you will find out how you can turn your business around. Today, we're going to cover the number one reason that your clients are not getting the results they want, the forms of trauma we're going to look at, and there are two basic forms. How trauma is inherited, how systemic trauma may be treated, how individual trauma may be treated, and what kind of issues, what kind of areas can we help our clients with in the way I'm working with this. What is required though is transformation from your basic knowledge and skills to cutting edge knowledge and skills that can actually deal with those deeper issues. Trauma, being trauma informed, if you are trauma informed, to go to trauma skilled. That means being able to process that trauma effectively. Now, process it in a way where the trauma is no longer present. It's in the distant past. They'll know it happened, of course, but they no longer have the triggers. They no longer have the upset. They no longer feel bad about it. And it happens quickly. And going from a struggling business to success. So how do I know? I have been in private practice since the year 2000 and I went into counselling from a teaching career where I was a teacher of physics and chemistry and I really wanted to make a difference for people, help people, um, yeah, move on, heal, um, get better, uh, live more meaningful lives. So that was my intention and yes, I was incredibly frustrated by what I found in counselling and that put me into psychotherapy and then I became a clinical hypnotherapist and then an NLP practitioner and, and so I carried on just adding and adding and adding until I then became a master of counseling and still I couldn't really help those really stuck clients and so yeah I was very very disappointed uh, I certainly wanted to do so much more and then a certain time came in my life when I was in a bookshop, actually in Sydney, and a certain little book seemed to jump out of that bookshelf at me. And when I picked it up and discovered it, it was about Systemic Family Constellations by Bert Hellinger. And the, the, I read the first page, was, was absolutely you know, enthralled, bought the book, went home, read it from cover to cover very quickly. And then I made a silent wish that I really wanted to see this in action. I really would love to see this constellation work. It sounded miraculous. It sounded like magic. So anyway, I forgot about it for a while. Then um, 2005, I was in India on a, a, a kind of a, um, a trip, traveling around, looking at different things in India, having a, a backpackers kind of trip, and ended up going to a particular place for a for you know, overnight, we were tired, we needed to rest. And then the next day in this place was a big sign saying, family constellations, come and have a look. Wow. So next minute, I'm going to this particular um, event, um, was blown away by it, as you might expect, stayed on, we stayed on and did a workshop. Um, fantastic, straight after that, there was a training, we canceled the rest of the holiday and just did that. So that was my initiation into systemic family constellations. And I'm forever grateful to Spaghetto Leibermeister, who was my first trainer. Uh, I've also experienced Bert Hellinger too. So I believe I've been very lucky in that. However, my, my purpose right now is to spread this so that other people can use this amazing way of working for 
stuck clients in looking at the systemic part of their issue effectively. I'd like to just discuss a little bit of how energy gets passed through family systems. I had a woman come to me who was very sad. She's very depressed, very sad. And when I asked her how long it had been like that, she said, as far as she knew forever, she can't remember a time when she wasn't that way. She'd already done a lot of sessions. She'd had a lot of treatment, a lot of medication, but many years later, still there. So she, I asked her, well, okay, where, if you look at both of your parents, are either of those particularly sad? Straight away, she said, mom. Okay, tell me a little bit more about mom's life. Well, mom is the daughter of her mother and her mother was born to the great grandmother for the client who had died in childbirth. She died having her eighth child, leaving seven children who were under 12, I think at that time, with the father. The mother and father had been a very devoted couple apparently, and even though life was tough, they kind of made the most of it. And um, yeah, so the grandfather was annihilated, just absolutely distraught to lose his wife and the baby um, like that. So suddenly, no indication that anything was wrong. And the what happened then apparently was that the children did not go to the funeral. Uh, my client's grandmother remembers she was not allowed to go to the funeral and being extremely upset about that because at the time the adults of those times thought that it wasn't the right thing to do to, to allow children to go to a funeral that they had an idea it would be more upsetting for them to do that so the children then were traumatized annihilated Apparently, the photos of the mother were taken down from the house. Obviously, they were probably trying to protect the children in some way, not realizing that they probably would have preferred to see them there. And a new wife was brought in for the grandfather. Okay, the grandfather really needed to look after his family. He knew that he had to carry on working to make sure there was food on the table. It was about survival. Uh, so he remarried very quickly, brought a new wife in, she took over, and life carried on. But the, ch the child, the daughter that became my client's grandmother, always had this deep, deep sadness and grief and depression, really. Um, and of course, she had her, her child as well, which is my client's mother, through this deep grief and longing and sadness and the mother had the similar and so did my client as well the granddaughter or great granddaughter of the original mother so of course i put up a constellation for this this was a group session and we were able to put up somebody to represent the great grandmother the grandmother the mother and the client four women plus the great grandfather, plus the um, new wife. And as soon as they were put up, they very quickly went into the energy of their roles. And there were a lot of deep crying and heaviness and the grandfather, grandmother got together very quickly and the children joined very quickly. And they were just crying in a big huddle really for quite a while just expressing their grief and their love. And then the new wife was noticed and she also came forward. And the grandmother was able to express deep gratitude to her for taking over in such a difficult situation um, to make sure the children survived. Um, the children were brought in as well and yes, it was, it was a very moving situation. At the end of the constellation, the woman went home. I saw her in a couple of weeks after that. And she told me how much lighter she was, how much op more optimistic, how, how she could actually enjoy things a little bit more or a lot more than she was before. 
And so she said, I found a picture of my great grandmother and I put her in a really special place in my house. And every time I go past and I look, it's as if she's smiling at me and it just gives me so much peace. So there is a really good example of how the energy of a family can get passed through the family system through the generations. Now, it's probably easy to see how that happens through the relational bonds that are happening between each generation. But I've also done other constellations where a child has been taken away from a family for whatever reason, perhaps adoption or fostering or parents died, and still carry the same energy of that family system. So it seems to happen in both ways, right? Um, yes, through the relational bonds, but through the energy that comes through with the DNA as well. And this has been shown by epigenetics to be so as well. So I'm looking here now at the five mistakes people make about complex issues. And I was making those, those mistakes too, right? So not knowing that unresolved trauma is a big part of their issue. Believing that trauma can only be managed and not resolved. Encouraging your clients to talk about the trauma, I didn't realize, can be re-traumatizing. Enabling your clients to see themselves as a victim, also not helpful, because it goes back to number three, encouraging your clients to talk about their trauma or their story over and over again, just makes that story or that imprint go even deeper into their psyche. It enables their enables that client to see themselves as a victim and they can get stuck there. Now I know that it's important to let your client know that they're not a victim, something bad happened to them, and that can be shifted and changed and resolved so that they can go from being a victim to not only a survivor, but to thriving. That's really my ultimate aim. And it's where I take my clients repeatedly now. Believing that resolving trauma takes a long time. No, it doesn't have to. It needs to be quick. In order to avoid, avoid the re-traumatization, it needs to be really quick. This is what I've learned. So how did we get so stuck? Well, we can't know what we don't know. We're still working primarily on pioneers from the past with knowledge and ideas from the 1950s. The 2020s with neuroscience, epigenetics, innovation in psychotherapies, all of this is not often not taken into account in our present day training and education, which I find incredulous actually. We need a new way. Now, what I found was there are three problems with the current approaches. The first one is we tend to work with the conscious mind when the problem is unconscious. The latest studies show that only 7% of our mind is conscious. And yet, if we look at what we were doing before with the five mistakes, we would, everything we were doing back there was to do with the conscious mind, right? Telling a story, managing the symptoms, strategies, all dealing with the conscious, not realizing that those deeper issues are linked or rooted in the past into the unconscious mind. So in other words, 93% of our mind is unconscious and that's where we need to work. The second problem, is that the unconscious mind is split into two. The personal unconscious mind, which holds all the stuff that comes from your personal life, your biography, if you like, from the point you were born up to now, or the systemic unconscious mind, which is what we are born with and what we carry with us into our lives comes from our generations, our parents, grandparents, and even past people we don't even know. That's the systemic unconscious mind. And the third problem is 
that we work with the symptoms. We don't work with the cause. Now, there are two secrets about trauma. Trauma ranges from light to intense. Now, when I say light, I'm meaning that trauma to a little child who's been yelled at, you know, by a parent, or that little child who's five or six been told in no unsightly terms that you will never amount to anything, that's a trauma to those younger parts of you or those younger parts of your clients. They don't know and you don't know at that point that that's not true and that it's been said in anger and they don't really mean it or all that sort of stuff. We don't know. We take it in as if it's true. And that is a trauma because that is kind of a big spear in your heart almost saying, oh, my gosh, I will never amount to anything. I'll never, I'll never they don't love me, whatever. And that is a trauma. Now, we might call that a lighter trauma, but to the people concerned, it sits inside them, deep inside, probably their whole lives as a trauma. And it goes around and it kind of comes out in all sorts of places, in relationships, with friendships, with bosses, with work, with their confidence, etc. Now, the other more intense traumas are obviously the war-torn you know, people who've experienced terrible tragedies, you know, um, violence that we can't even imagine, uh, atrocities, etc. But also, you know, sexual abuse is also a similar kind of trauma. And so trauma ranges from light to intense. The other secret is the mechanism of the traumas, whether we consider them light or very intense, the mechanism is the same. I'd like to share with you a case of anger. I had a man come to me with extreme anger and he was worried about this. He didn't want to be angry. He didn't want to trigger off all the time. His relationships were in a bit of a mess and his wife was threatening to leave him and he had to do something about his anger. Now, he had been to counselling before, he'd done anger management courses before, but he was frustrated with himself because he said, look, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I can't do it. It triggers up and it goes straight away. So then I asked about his family system and I, when he looked at his own family, he saw that his father was also very angry. And then when I asked about what happened in his father's family, there was a lot of injustice. A, a lot of things had gone really badly wrong. People blamed for stuff he said they didn't do. Uh, they were a poor family. They often got really hardly dealt with by the public or the, the government or the powers that be. A couple of things went wrong. And I think one of them went to jail for something he didn't do. There was a lot of frustration and injustice in that family. And so his father too was really angry. Um, his, his own situation of anger was definitely there. So I did a constellation. And I also did, after the constellation, in a, in a week or so later, I did an EMI with him on what was left of the um, anger from his personal unconscious mind as well. And when he came back for the third session, he was in such a good place. Um, there really wasn't much to do. So, so we did a different session whereby we were looking forward to how he was going to direct his life now. And he said how his children and his wife commented on how different things were with him at home now. They kind of dreaded him being there. But now he was just in a much better place. So trauma. Trauma occurs when something happens that forms overwhelm that can't be processed. It is repressed to allow you to function for survival, but over time it resurfaces in terms of problems or mental health or 
just a feeling, you know, a guilt feeling or a sadness or a, yeah, helplessness, I guess. Unresolved trauma can be from at least two origins, the systemic generational trauma or the personal trauma. And most therapies only focus on, focus on treating personal trauma. However, this won't resolve it entirely with complex stuck issues. We need to have a way of allowing that trauma to be processed safely and quickly and effectively so that it releases the client from whatever that behavior is they're dealing with. There are many kinds of systemic traumas, genocide, colonization. As an Australian person living in Australia, colonization is a very big part of what's happening in our country in terms of the indigenous people still struggling with what happened to their forefathers and mothers and the energy of that still carrying on down through the generations. Because according to epigenetics now, this can be carried for up to seven generations after the initial trauma. Also, I believe it's affecting the non-Indigenous too, because there is a sense of guilt and shame for the non-Indigenous, which also has not been acknowledged and expressed as well. So it's a really difficult trauma, not only personally, but nationally as well. War of all sorts causes trauma. Holocaust, yes, of course, good example of that. But what's happening right now throughout the whole world in terms of our refugees running all over the world, looking for a safe place because it's not safe where they are or they don't have food, is also a trauma which is going to carry on for generations to come from to their descendants as well. Generational sexual abuse, incest is also a trauma. And famine, of course, a trauma, a survival trauma. Haven't got enough to eat. That's, that's an existential trauma if you think about it. So also relational issues are traumas because we're social beings. Poor attachment bonding, disruptions in relationships, unresolved emotions, shocks and traumas. Immigration, believe it or not, is a major trauma cutting off from country, cutting off from tradition, cutting off from those vital relationships and the shared histories of those original lands is a big trauma. Divorce and separation, definitely a trauma for the children concerned, unless it's worked with in a really sensitive and effective way. Single parent families, blended families, of course they can all be wonderful but they're often very confused and there is a trauma around that. Adoption, institutionalization, fostering, and much more, all of these are traumas. So how do we go to the roots of an issue if we or the client can't see where it comes from, it's not visible, right? It's in the unconscious mind, generational or personal. And even if we could go there, what would we do with it? Talk about it? Well, no, that doesn't work, right? We've already worked that one out. Strategize it? No, it doesn't work. Doesn't working this way take months or years? Isn't that what Freud did and probably what we don't want to do? Okay, lots of problems here. And here we have the systemic approach. Systemic family constellations that was brought to us by Bert Hellinger in the 1990s. An out of the box approach to look at a problem from a systemic point of view, a systemic aspect looking at the problem and the person in the context of their family system will always bring up the systemic issue if you understand the processes 
and the structure that you can use to do that. Accessing underlying dynamics. Rapid results. So going from being stuck to positive change for the client, how wonderful. Going from frustration on our part as therapists to success. Now the promise is that systemic family constellations will provide you with a new way to look at your client and their problems with an effective experiential approach for groups and private sessions, including online. And you will be able to work with a huge range of issues because this way of working is deeply foundational. It goes to the foundational aspects of the person. And if that can be helped or healed in some way, it will have profound effects on all kinds of parts of their lives, relationships of all kinds. Because if we have a damaged pattern in our imprint of relationships, we will go out searching for those same relationships unconsciously to try and work them out. Therefore, we end up going through a pattern of picking inappropriate partners. It affects mental health. So you can definitely work with depression, anxiety, panic, self-esteem, and a whole range of mental health issues, including the source of addiction. That is very much part of systemic constellations. Trauma of all kinds, systemic trauma. Systemic sexual abuse. We're talking about the sexual abuse that runs in families, whether it's with siblings or neighbors coming in to abuse or whether it's institutionalized or whether it's incest with a parent. And wellness, health issues often have a systemic component to them and success, sabotage patterns, uh, being able to move on, you know, if you're a coach or something and you're trying to help your client move on more successfully. That is the promise. A man I saw not so long ago who came to me, it was only in his 30s, perhaps early 30s, but he had a lot of mental health problems. Um, he had been seeing psychiatrists, psychologists. He was on quite heavy, he had been on heavy medication. And he was having all sorts of behaviors, thoughts, feelings, which were actually damaging everything in his life. It was having an effect at work. It was having an effect with his family members. It was definitely having an effect with his uh, relationships, you know, friendships and uh, girlfriends, etc. And so he came to me really desperate. And on the first session, we, I did a constellation with him and it showed a terribly difficult family system. Uh, the first session was huge. I saw him for another one, for another aspect of that particular family system. And really by the time we got to session number four, he was okay. Now this man had suffered uh, watching his mother being sexually abused by a family member repeatedly and also the helplessness that had on him as a young boy and also the violence within that family and the total dysfunction of that family but by the end of let's say four sessions he was in such a different place right so this is what I call proof right as a science-based person it has to actually show in the client that they can actually say, well, actually that's no longer right in my face anymore. It's now way in the distance. Yes, I knew it happened, but it no longer hurts me so much, right? Or hurts me at all. It's kind of just part of the history that I was born into or I experienced. So this is really important information and what I consider as proof, experiential proof. Now, so far, we've been talking about systemic trauma primarily, and that's what I said we do at the beginning of the talk or the training. But I just need to talk very briefly about the personal component, because the personal component is also incredibly important, right? And so when we are dealing with trauma, I personally now work with the systemic component using systemic constellations, 
And I have another way of working now with the personal components of trauma, which is incredibly effective and fits together beautifully with systemic constellations. And this is trauma that's been caused by the shocks and trauma in life that happen in your clients or your own personal bio, your own life experience. And these are the shocks, sadnesses, disappointments, and traumas in your life. And for this, I use EMI, Emotional Mind Integration, which I have founded. And this causes or enables the, your client to go through deep, rapid healing and change. And it's self-healing. So this whole system now is called Rapid Core Shift. And you can see how it fits together like a jigsaw puzzle. Systemic constellations, incredibly important for systemic issues or the systemic parts of those issues. EMI, emotional mind integration, incredibly important for the personal components of those same issues. And this final component, Rapid Core Shift. So I'm so passionate to share this breakthrough method with you so that you can have a practice that is thriving, doing work that you love. You can go from being a therapist to a confident therapist, from being trauma informed to trauma skilled, being individually focused to holistically focused. You can transform yourself and your practice I've created an online systemic family, family constellations training to give you all the skills you need to amplify your results. And the fact that it's online means there is no limitation, is there? You can be anywhere in the world to receive this training. Yes, you might have to uh, find yourself a, a way of sleeping in the day if you're the other side of the planet, but it's possible. And by the way, anybody who is on the other side of the planet who would like this training to happen in your time zone, just give me a call. And perhaps if you can get a group of people together, I can help with that. You can start your systemic training now. All you need to do is apply, register and pay and start learning. So what did you enjoy about today? What would be the biggest impact in your life? What would you like to hear? Would you like to hear how it will work for you? Well, a systemic constellation training is, is out of the way, a 12 week training. You can learn at your own pace. You start um, about 10 weeks or nine weeks prior to the final online component. It's split into two parts, the online learning component, which you do, which is self-paced um, and you do it at your own pace. And then you have to be present for the five day online intensive experiential component, which is part two. And you're learning with your, at your own pace. Uh, you're, you're learning through your case studies as well, because at the end of the training, you have to do four case studies with four people in systemic constellations. And just give me a brief rundown, 500 words of each, of what was the issue? How did you work with it? What was the outcome? I just want to make sure that you have got the gist of what you're meant to be doing so you can go out feeling competent and confident at the end of the training. So your next step is a 15 minute application call. So you'll need to book that with me. Then if you decide to start, you will start the training and you are already on the road to making an impact with your clients and your business. In doing this training, I would like to be able to work with generational trauma, mental health issues, relationships of all kinds, personal development of all kinds, coaching, 
in particular sabotage patterns, using systemic constant. The key points are, you'll be able to work systemically. And if you do EMI, you'll be able to work individually as well with trauma. Transform from being trauma informed to trauma skilled. Work with systemic unconscious mind. Work with cause for results in a solution focused way. Get rapid results for your clients and a great reputation for yourself. Work with the latest science, neuroscience, epigenetics. Work with cutting edge psychotherapy innovation that works. So you need to book your 15 minute call if you're interested. And this is to apply to check suitability, your suitability for me and my suitability for you, for you with a 15 minute call, just to have a chat about what you're looking for and just to see whether this is right for you. There will be a link below where you can check your suitability. So you're still not sure. Now I know that change is a big thing. And I know that changing the way you work, changing the way you think is a big thing. And perhaps you have to consider it seriously. I think that's wise. Because the way you work involves your identity, your previous study, all those alliances you've made with fields of information. But going from doubting to knowing is really about going from coming to all of that, that will have all had value, no doubt, but perhaps knowing that you need to follow your gut in this opportunity of turning your business around, becoming successful at what you do and following your dream. The other possibility is you might be stuck. I'm stuck in the old paradigm of healing. Yeah, fine. Well, but you're here too, so you're also curious. So look at the results the latest proven neuroscience methodologies where you will see the results quickly. You won't have to wait months or years to see people change. And going from struggling to success while well, staying the same, which is what you can, because if nothing changes, then nothing will change, or going to success. And yes, it's a big shift. I understand that. Yeah, perhaps you're worried about spending more money, more time in training. You need to adapt to the, to the calculation. Worried about money and time? Yes, of course. But how much have you spent so far on all your trainings in terms of money? How much? Just sit down and tot it up. You'll probably amaze yourself as I did when I did it for myself. How much time? Years? And you're still struggling with stuck clients. Okay, so you need to consider that, don't you? This is proven and working now. So the only question I ask is how much do you want it? Are you ready to step into success and not just talk about it? So I hope that has been interesting. I hope it's given you lots of food for thought. And if you're interested in discussing your options with me, please go on to the book now button to book your time with me um, to have that brief conversation whereby you can ask any questions and I will ask a couple of questions of you too. So we can get to know each other and see whether we are a good fit or not. No obligation with these calls, by the way. Okay, so hopefully I might see you soon.